Hello, today I'm going to show you how to make a polymer clay heart. The polymer clay hearts come, you can do it any colour you like, any colour glitter you like. They also have little polymer clay hearts that go on the end to dress them and as you can see they hang rather fetchingly over my shoulder. So what will you need to start this project? You will need two blocks of polymer clay. This is Primo, this is the one I prefer. You may experiment with what you like. You may have your own favorite polymer clay. You will need a glazed tile upon which to work. You also need to protect your table because if this comes in contact with a varnished surface, it will bubble up, not nice. You will also need a template, a template. You'll also need a smaller template made of wire, of wire. And here's the template for the wire. The wire is a premium mesh art sheet. You buy it in a, you buy it in a craft shop. You need a craft knife. You need some cord after you've made your, made your pendant. This is parachute cord. It's called 325. You can use anything you like. You might prefer to use cotton or leather, but you will need something chunky. Otherwise, if it's too thin, it looks silly. You will need some glaze. I use a varathane glaze. I decant it into a jar. This is important. If you leave the varathane, varathane glaze in the tin, after a while, the inside of the lid starts to form rust and you will have flecks of rust in your, in your tin and in your liquid. So I always decant it into a jar and then decant it even into a smaller receptacle, like an egg cup, when I'm, when I'm doing the glazing. Otherwise the, the glaze picks up the glitter and you don't want that to be transferred into any other project. You need to condition the clay, which means you just knead it hard until it gets soft enough to work. Get it to be thin enough and now you're going to put it through the pasta machine on the widest setting. And this is where it's important that you have something to work on. Now we're going to cut out the, the heart. So I have a template. This was a, a metal that I bought from a craft store. You can cut it with scissors. So see what's in your craft store. And I think I'm going to get four out of this strip. I might have to mash them all up again and um, or mash the leftovers all up again to get another long piece. But let's just do this. We've got our two pieces. So this is where the magic mesh comes in. So you place it on there. Notice I've cut a little hole. It's an inexact science. And then you put the second piece over the top. And then you're pinching the edges together. And then you really have to smooth them. Smooth. You can see that there's a ridge there. So you don't want to see that. So you're going to smooth it until it looks perfectly nice and it doesn't it's not obvious that it's two layers now i'm going to make the hole for the pendant this is where educated dress work comes in I, it's around there so this is a darning needle and i've just got two sizes so you make a pilot hole i think that's roughly where it is yep and then enlarge the hole with my bigger darning needle and then bring in the big guns this is a knitting needle this is a size seven sometimes if i really want a good hole i use a pencil but you have to do this fairly slowly you don't want to be rough with the polymer clay because you can just distort it That should be big enough. Now to make the end hearts for your pendant. So I've got a piece of the leftover clay. I'm going to cut it in half. And I'm going 
going to gently knead it into a ball-ish shape. And then I will use my knitting needle just to make a groove. Be quite firm with this, make a groove. Once you've made your groove, you can then go back to using your fingers. It's got to be quite chunky in the middle. This may be a little big, but this is demonstration purposes only because you have to make a fairly large hole because you are going to using parachute cord and you've got to make a hole big enough to slide a piece of parachute cord in. So you'd start by making a small hole and then move the move the knitting needle around so you make it into a bigger hole. And it's got to have a bit of a well in the bottom because you're going to drop in, put a few drops of super glue in here. So it has to be quite a quite a sturdy little well in there. And I even will use the top of a pencil. Now comes the best bit. Putting the glitter on. You need a piece of stiff paper. I've got cardstock. Fold it in half, crease it, and then that's important. Anybody who's worked with glitter will know it will go everywhere and you don't, it's difficult to get the leftover glitter together unless you've made a little gully. Put your completed heart there and then smother it with glitter. This is so fabulous. And you just gently, gently press it in. I make sure that everything's covered. Flip it over. Glitter, by the way, goes everywhere. So once you use the glitter and your project is baking, use a little va craft vacuum or something to get up every last, every last piece of glitter because otherwise it, you'll find red glitter or whatever colour you've used insinuating itself into any other project you do. So this is a bit like nuclear waste. You have to be careful. And yet the edges, you, you really have to push the glitter on. So we've done that. We'll do that. Carry on doing that. You can see in a minute when I've finished. And then you do exactly the same with the end pieces. Just Push them gently into the, don't get glitter into your hole because you want your hole to be clean so that you can put the glue in. Pieces are now ready to be baked. Just make sure before you bake them that the holes still work because it will be very difficult to do anything about it after they are baked. Put them on a bed of fibre fill. Any craft shop will sell this. So we put that, make sure they're not touching, put on a lid, any covered vessel will do, if you haven't got a lid for anything just use tin foil, then you'll bake it at 275 for 25 minutes per quarter inch thickness. The pieces are baked, so now we're going to put the first coat of varathane on. As you can see, I've decanted some varathane into an egg cup because this will pick up bits of red glitter or any other colour you are using. You don't want to have it in your main supply jar, so do not put it back in, even if there's loads left over. So, I tend to just use one brush as well. I, this is the only brush I use for glazing. So just be fairly liberal with it. Make sure that you go all around. So I will put that down and then I will dry it quickly with the hairdryer and then I will be ab able to do the reverse side. And I give each piece three coats of glaze. The little end pieces are a bit more of a fiddle. So choose somewhere where you're going to hold it. Let's go there. And you can do you can do both sides. 
but this is infinitely more fiddly because you cannot lay this down anywhere. So, my friend Krista Tracy, art teacher extraordinaire, came up with the idea of using Oasis here. And now, the trick is to try and balance it and not knock it off. If you do knock it off, it's not the end of the world. So that is now glazed, put it in there, I'll do the other one, speed up the drying process and then the next phase will be putting the um, parachute cord in, so I will see you later. I now have 50 inches or about 118 centimetres of parachute cord. I have heat sealed the ends by using a match. Now the next thing is to thread the pendant. I folded the parachute cord in half poked it through the hole, now I'm going to thread these bits through. This makes a very tidy looking pendant. And then I will do a reef knot up here, and then I will show you how to attach the end beads. Now to do the reef knot. So for those not nautical, here we go. Left over right over and under, so pull it up again, and then right over left, over and under. And when you pull it together, you see a lovely symmetrical, essentially a square knot. Now for the last hurdle, attaching the end bead. So these have to be attached to here. So. Hold the bead between very firmly between your fingers, hold it level because you're then going to put two or three drops of super glue and as soon as you put two or three drops in put the cap back on because otherwise it will set and then take an end and put it into the hole and just hold it for a few seconds. The finished item and some other that I had made earlier.